Science Beetle. Hey, welcome back students. I wanted to take this moment to kind of go over the SDS and the NFPA label. And so let's go ahead and begin with the title. So when we talk about SDS, what we're really talking about here is the safety data sheet. And so this is going to be the, the first three letters here, SDS, and that's what kind of gives us the acronym. Now, safety data sheets are a collection of 16 different uh, sections that you use to identify hazards for any given uh, element or compound. And so we use these then to create these things called NFPA labels. And over here on the far right, uh, you see that this here is the diamond that is generically uh, used for the NFPA label. So you might have seen a whole bunch of these uh, around town maybe near gas stations, maybe on some vehicles on the highway or elsewhere. And the, and the reason we use these is because it gives you a visual way of identifying hazards associated with three different uh, categories or sections. So let me kind of put these here and identify them for you. In the blue section here, we're going to have the health. And so these are going to be hazards that are associated with the health of the organism, typically talking about maybe the uh, organs, how they're affected, or the eyes, or the lungs, or the skin. Some type of health-related uh, injuries are going to be identified here in the health section. In the section with the red category at the top, these are going to be uh, flame or flammability. So these are hazards associated with whether the compound in question or the substance essentially is going to catch on fire. Is it combustible uh, will it, or flammable rather? The other category here, the yellow one, is going to be the reactivity. And what that means is it looks at hazards that are associated whether this particular substance is going to react with another substance. And then finally the last category here at the bottom uh, this is the light gray area, often also referred to as the, the white category here because of the color. Uh, because, but you also have another name. These are also known as the special hazards. And so I'll put this here as special hazards. And what's really unique about these four is kind of the way you distinguish them aside from the color. The main thing is that whenever we're talking about the health hazard, this is going to be associated with some kind of number. Same thing with the flammability. There's a number associated with that. And the reactivity is also provided a number. This number is a rating of 0 to 4. Whereas when we talk about special hazards, there is no number here. What we actually have here is a code associated with it. And so those codes can be a variety of things, and I want to show you what those are. So in order for me to do that, let me go ahead and erase some of the items on the screen, and let me put the rating here on the side for you. So let's go ahead and move this here out of the way. We know we're dealing with the SDS, so we'll put that there. And then the other item is I'm going to move these items as well for the special hazard. See if I can move this a little bit over here to the right. And let's make some space for ourselves. Okay. So there we go. Perfect. All right, so when we talk about the ratings, the rating system for these particular codes, for any of these on the uh, flammability, the health, and the reactivity, the code is generally a code of 0 to 4 rating. The highest rating is a 4. And the ratings go down 3, 2, 1, and 0, 0 being the lowest. Essentially, what we've got here is if you've got the rating of zero, that essentially says that there is no serious or any real hazard here. Okay. It also means, like in the case of reactivity, it, it also means that the, the material is very stable. Now, the ratings increase from zero all the way to four. And if you've got the level four, the level four is the highest. Essentially, this can be either lethal or it could be very dangerous. This is going to result in very serious, life-threatening injury to you, the individual. 
So shown another way, let me show you the actual rating that I've developed for people here. So it's a little bit cleaner. Instead of me writing it down, let me just show it to you. And so let's get rid of some of the information here. Let's go and get rid of this. Let's get rid of the title here. And we'll keep this other section over here. We'll just make it a little bit smaller, move it off to the side so we can still see it. But it'll give us an opportunity to put stuff on the screen. And so when we bring in this other information, what we're looking for here is we are going to put in the rating system. So let me just revisit this rating system from zero to four. So here is the rating system color coded appropriately. So all the hazards for health are in blue, all the hazards for flammability are in red, and all the instability or reactivity hazards are identified in yellow. And as you can see that the bottom of the scale, we've got a zero rating, and that's gonna be identified here as no hazard for the hazard it will not burn for flammability, and that the re chemical is actually very stable. Uh, so if, it, if you got any of these three, then obviously the number rating that we want to give it, respectively in each of these three areas, is going to be a rating of zero. Now, as the, the hazard increases in severity, then clearly the number rating is going to go from a zero to a one, then a two, three, and a four. And as you can see here at the level four, in the hazards for health, you can see that the rating here is the highest. That's because it can be very lethal. For flammability, you see that the chemical in question is going to be able to readily burn at very normal temperatures. It doesn't need very much energy at all to actually catch on fire. So it has the highest rating there. And then in terms of stability reactivity, the chemical here is going to be very prone to explosive uh, conditions or it may explode at very normal temperatures and pressures. Again, just like the fire, it does not need much of a trigger or a spark, if you will, that little energy. It doesn't need very much because it is very unstable. It's very ready, readily uh, positioned itself uh, because of the way of its composition or else uh, otherwise for it to actually uh, engage in a, an explosion because of the, the high volatility that it's in. So depending on the rating that you see on the SDS, you definitely want to go ahead and provide the uh, the appropriate scales here for the um, chemical that you're giving for the appropriate code. So you definitely want to keep this in mind. So let's go ahead and take a look at uh, where this is going to apply. So depending on where you actually have the code, 0 through 4, you're only going to apply it over here to the blue, to the red, and to the yellow ratings over here on the top three areas of the diamond for the NFPA label. Now, what about the bottom section, this gray white area? What are we gonna do there? What codes do we use there? Well, those are slightly different. And so let me show you what codes you find or need to be able to use for this uh, area down here at the bottom of the diamond. So let's go ahead and move this code here. We'll move this over here to the right and we'll bring in our code uh, sequence for the special codes here on the left hand side. So what we've got here is a series of codes. One thing that you need to make sure that you understand very clearly from the very beginning is that these special codes are not rated on a zero to four scale. Instead, what we do is when we look at the SDS, particularly in some of the predominant sections of the SDS, and I'll show you those here where they are, but to predominantly out of the 16, there's five you really wanna start with first and then look at them. That's gonna be section two, five, six, eight, and 10. I'll show those to you here in a little bit. But what you wanna do then is when you look at those sections, you wanna look for special uh, conditions or hazards that may exist in any of those or any of the other six, uh, 16 in total is find out if it's alkaline. In other words, is the pH above seven? If it is, you want to use the abbreviated symbol of ALK. If the substance is acidic, typically you'll find this in the name, kind of like hydrochloric acid at the very end of the name. If it is acidic, you want to make sure you put the keyword here, acid, in the code section down here in the, in the bottom of the diamond. If it happens to be corrosive, you want to put the code COR. If it's an oxidizing agent, in other words, if it engages in oxidation, then you want to put OX as part of the code. If it reacts violently with water, you'll find this in the reactivity section, section 10. You definitely want to make sure you put the symbol, a W with a line through it. Okay. And then also the other one is if it's an oxidizer or it happens to have multiple of these special hazards. For example, if a element or a compound is identified that to react violently with any other uh, 
substance, or in particularly in this case, reacts violently with water and is an oxidizing agent, then what you want to put is the W with a line through it and the OX. Now the last special symbol that we use in this area is the radioactive symbol. Now a lot of the substances you're going to use in class are definitely not going to be radioactive. But in case you went on from high school on to college and then perhaps secured employment where they would use that in one of the laboratories, uh, then you would use the symbol here to uh, share the, the hazard for radio radioactivity to anybody who's going to be using that substance. And so you definitely want to put these special codes down here in the uh, special codes area. Uh, at the bottom of the diamond, uh, otherwise labeled in the light gray or in the white region here of the diamond. Okay. Now, what do these 16 sections look like? Let's take a moment and look at those. In order for me to make some space here, let me kind of minimize this. And I'm going to go ahead and move this over here to the side. Just place this over here. And let me bring the information over here on the left-hand side. All right, so here are the sections that you want to be able to uh, look at in your SDS exploration, trying to find these hazards. And so what you want to pay attention to is notice that there are 16 sections overall, beginning with identification, hazard identification, which is one of the major categories. You always want to look at section two initially after you've identified the element or compound here in section one. Section three deals with composition and ingredients. Four is first aid measures. So those are going to be, if you happen to get exposure to it, things you should do as a first aid treatment. You'll find them here in section four. If you're looking for flammability or fire protection measures, you want to make sure you look at section five. That's a big key area. Section six deals with accidental release measures. In case it spills, what happens, what should you do? Uh, you want to make sure you look at six. This is a big category, so you want to make sure you label that as an important section. Storing and handling the chemical is addressed in Section 7. Section 8 deals with exposure and personal protection. So this is going to address any need for uh, special equipment like gloves, masks, uh, coats, or uh, maybe perhaps respirators or some highly protective uh, protection equipment for yourself. Uh, and it will also address what to do if you do get exposure to the chemical. Section 11 deals with toxicological information. This is going to be the whether it's toxic and to what, what you should do if, if it were uh, if perhaps ingested. You want to make sure that you can address that. Section 12 deals with ecological information. Those, this addresses the, the need to be aware if it act, happens to spill in the environment, what are some of the effects that you can experience there and what to do. In order to dispose the chemical, some considerations are provided here in Section 13 of the disposal considerations. Transporting the chemical is addressed in uh, section 14. This is typically for suppliers of the chemicals, how you, they, they should transport that. And if you're going to be transporting chemicals from one location to the other, then you should be able to read this section and get some information on how what would be the proper best way to transport it. Regulatory information deals with some of the regulatory laws or regulations that are imposed on uh, transport, handling, and possession of the uh, chemical. And then other information that has not already been addressed in any of the pre previous 15 sections is a divide, uh, identified in section 16. So what you want to do is look at all of these, obviously, but you definitely want to start with section 2, 5, 6, 8, and 10 and identify what is the, the information that we kind of need to look for. So it's very important that you're very familiar with this. Be familiar with where you can look at this information. Your school teacher should have a binder full of these SDSs, these documents that provide these hazards, or you should be able to identify them easily on a website. Now, on our particular website, you can definitely look at that by going to the home page and going down to the bottom and doing a search on the SDS link provided in our class, or do a search online for SDS. And you should be able to come up with many directories that will provide you that information. Do keep in mind that many of the directories are slightly different and their presentation of the SDS information is going to be different as well. So that'll do it for this particular video, folks. But if you haven't already done so, click subscribe. Join us in, in our exploration of various chemistry topics. So keep watching, keep learning, and we'll definitely see you in the next video.